Uh, yeah. So the idea was to, to it's a business business case. So well, welcome to developers too. But we'll talk a little bit with technical things. Um, the idea is to talk about publishing industry and it's specifically some ex one example uh, from France. Um, well, so just the world. Well, we are kind of doing a lot of websites, and uh, oh, yeah. so we want to talk about the one f old French uh, press group, which is called Le Monde, El Mundo, probably in Spain. Uh, it was created just before the war. You know all this stuff in, with France and war. And, uh, in 1944, and now it is uh, a quite big organization, media group, publishing group. They publish um, a daily news, Le Monde itself, which is not running Drupal yet, uh, but also a lot of magazines, weekly, monthly magazines, there is a small part of them. And they decided at some point to change their technology stack that was a very old custom development based on PHP and several layers of PHP with several databases all around. Um, actually, publishing itself, so we have actually two magazines. The first one is Korea International, which is, you can go and see, it is already up and running, it's all French. Um, the thing with this magazine is quite, um, they overview articles all around the world in different magazines and then translate them into French. So it, there are the specifics due to this workflow. We'll go back to that later. The second magazine also is Telerama, which is, um, I think, one of the um, Number one uh, websites uh, if you want to check your TV program, but they also have a massive amount of uh, content about everything related to culture. Um, TV, series, um, theater, spectacles, you have everything. You have um, um, a lot of content about uh, authors, actors, articles, news, re movie reviews. It's in quite old... Um, system again, a lot of PHP stack, different databases, etc. So, as any any publishing industry, um, they are facing um, they are facing facing the problem of um, of revenues. So they sell less and less paper, and they don't get enough money from the digital. Um, so they have to obviously increase their sales at any in any ways, but also decrease the cost of, of their system. So the, 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 the idea is you have uh, one journalist writing an article, spending days or hours, depending on the quality, and then you have to reuse it as much as possible over mobile, Facebook, Apple News, your website, um, your um, partner website, but also print. So we, they launched an, a larger RFP, it was two years ago, to create a B-Media CMS, what they call it. Like that. So the idea was to create one standard system for all their titles, a CMS, a content management framework, that covers all the needs of all different magazines, which are quite different, as you can imagine. Korea International, they, they have their workflow translating articles from other magazines. You have Telerama, which is basically uh, talking about TVs, and they have a lot of content arriving from external data sources. But still, they need the same. And the thing, and there was the first movers in France, I don't know from the rest of the world, but in France it was the first movers to say the digital will pilot the print and not the reverse. Because usually groups in publishing, what they do, they have a, their legacy systems used to print, and then they send an XML feed to feed the websites. This is usually how it works. I don't know if how it works in your countries. You know, if you worked with publishing company, but well, it works like that in France. And the idea was they want to reverse that, and it's it's a very huge change because from a technical point of view, it's nothing more than just reverse 
sending one XML to another system. But from a culture point of view from the company, it's an enormous shift because they have to force journalists to work on the on the print uh, print journalists to work on the web. And uh, well, so they launched the RFP, but during the RFP there was a very long six months RFP process with a real competition, real audit of different solutions. So the first one they was looking for was Symfony because this was suggested by their legacy vendor who created all the multi-layer cake of PHP stuff and say, okay, we remove everything and we redo everything in Symfony. The second thing was Ados Media based internal team and with Symfony and Node.js guys working on the CMS currently used by Le Monde .fr, which is a daily newspaper, which is quite different. Um, and this last one was us with Drupal. So actually there was, it was a very long decision they tried and, 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 and I, when they analyzed all, all the things that have to be done uh, for to support their magazine, they finally selected Drupal because it costs them less, because uh, um, Ados Media and an internal system was more designed to create small news every day, not magazines, not long-term things, not media management. And um, their legacy vendor, I don't know, maybe they don't like them. Um, anyway, what we want to create is something like we have um, different data sources that are really important. We import images, video, feeds of content from different sources. And then we have journalists who create articles too and publish them then on um, print system using InDesign or Quark Express because obviously different magazines use different printing systems. Uh, the website is quite normal. We didn't go from, for a headless Drupal. It's classical website with, with template generation, nothing new. And the set of mobile applications. The websites themselves are responsive, but there are also a couple of uh, mobile applications that will connect using services and, and get the content. So Drupal acts like a, like, like a CMS, but also like an ETL platform taking content from different parts. So, what is so different when you are talking about publishing in print? Because when you look at the website, you think it's quite easy. You have articles, you have content types, you have media, and that's all. So it's you have you take open publish distribution and you install it and done. Well, it's not quite that actually. You have several things. Uh, obviously, when you're doing magazines, the media is extremely important and they buy a lot of pictures from different uh, sources. So you have to be able to manage in a central way all the licenses for the photos. So if they are using licenses, they can use it from one date to another date, and once it's uh, finished, you have to unpublish it from everywhere. And the same media may be used in several articles in the same time or several different content types. So you have to be able to, uh, you cannot use IMC, you cannot use media, you have to create some specific media management system. Uh, obviously, HD print uh, it, uh, image conversion system is it's quite complicated because uh, the, the photos are about uh, several um, megabytes, but 20, 50 megabytes, 40 megabytes, 100 megabytes, and you have to be able to upload them in an efficient way, convert them, and also extract EXIF um, metadata. Metadata is extremely important for them, so when you take a photo, they don't want to fill it. You have, they have a... Um, um, hundreds of photos for an article, for example, that they can select from. So when you import them, you have to take all the metadata. Who is the copyright? Because you have to, uh, you have to note them. You have to quote the copyright, etc. Um, another th system, what was we, we discovered that that actually we didn't think before the RFP process, but it's so obvious, is the offline mode. Actually, when you journalists create for the web, if they don't have any internet access. It's not quite a big problem. They have some delays. They can go outside or whatever. They can create your articles or whatever. Well, there will be no article for three hours on the website. No problem. But if they don't have internet and they have to print magazine, uh, the press and the printing system cannot wait. You have 200,000 of magazine to be distributed all around the country. So you cannot wait even one hour and you will delay, there is no delay possible. So whatever happens, even if they have free internet connection in their offices from three different providers, um, one is uh, ADSL, one is fiber, whatever, satellite, but even then, uh, there was one time or 
two times per year. There was no internet in the office for any reasons. So they have to be able to print anyway. So they have their printing system they're all the, inside the offices. So we have to be able to manage this offline mode. It's quite complicated in Drupal 2. Um, I've said about external data sources. Uh, just to get you an idea, we, we are talking about hundreds of thousands of nodes synchronized every day because we have all the um, cinemas, all the movies, all the um, agenda of all cinemas and all movies. Uh, we have all theaters events. You have uh, all cultural events and, and, and many other content coming from an IFP, for example, Reuters. We are all synchronized them, and there are a lot of content. Um, and ob well, the, the, the most f easiest, the easiest thing to develop was the InDesign integration because actually that was the most scary for us because we don't know how to create plugins or whatever. So, but it's quite easy uh, from a technical point of view. You just export an XML to InDesign and then you have the small InDesign plugin that takes your XML and put it inside the templates. Um, another thing, you have to think about the issue thing. Like in, in, on a website, on a media thing, you don't, you just have a flood of content with nodes and tags and things. But when you start to think about print, you have to assemble them in issues. So this issue thing is quite important because you have to arrange your article inside issues. And you have small things like char counters because you, in print, you cannot like infinite scroll. You don't have scroll, you don't have panels, so you don't have views. So when you generate the content for a page, you have to be careful that there are enough space for that. So it's, and it's not easy chart counting, in, not working because obviously the, the f based on the fonts, font size, the in place of the, and the images, it's all combined. You, you know that you have some place for that, but you, we spend like couple of months just to just to work on this chart counting system because it's really complicated because you 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 have to not only say the limit is 100 is the limit is 100 if the font used is this size and you don't have an insert of if you insert but the position is there then it's 150 etc etc they have hundreds of rules like that and um, finally you also have to think about workflow uh, because the workflow involves real printing. At some, some point on Drupal, you have the workflow. It's very easy, validated. I read, OK, it's OK, next, you have whatever. Uh, when you have print issues, at some point it arrives in, in design, it generates a PDF, and it goes back to Drupal for the final validation. So this, again, it's, 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 you have to think about that because it's important. But anyway, now we are, they are running since, I think, February, so it's a couple of months. I think they, they are extremely happy and, and, and they really see uh, optimization in their resources usage. So also back office is quite important. We created about 150 pages requirements, documents, specification in the wireframe just for the back office. This is how the back office looks in terms of pages. Uh, why it's important? Because you, we have about, I think, 50 or 40 content types there. There is a lot of small things like uh, reviews, film reviews, authors, etc. So you have to work on, on, on the back office is really important because the guys are using it daily and they cannot wait or, or cannot be retrained or whatever. So this is, it's not that easy. You have a lot to think a lot and, and spend a lot of time. I think we spend about three months just to, for, on the back office. Um, then in terms of architecture, um, have to be like bulletproof because again um, it's like an e-commerce if the e-commerce website doesn't work they lose money here if you don't print one issue again 200,000 they all paid in advance distributors are paying in advance. there are millions of euros each week which may be uh, so we created a kind of robust platform um, using s all, all high available, everything is uh, on different data centers. And one thing we tried on this for, for the first time, it was quite good experience and really, really I, I think you should use it. Uh, it's um, Galera cluster, which is a MySQL cluster and it really works perfectly well. It's master, master cluster. We have three, three servers working on that. So it solves all the problem with classical master slave thing. Um, and it's quite efficient. Um, then the offline mode, we still are using the 
experimenting with the two because we, we, we implemented the two systems just to test which one is good. Uh, so the main problem of offline, you have the nodes, uh, they have one Drupal installation on, online, like in the data center, and one another Drupal uh, inside their offices. So the question is what happens if they, uh, you know, usually everybody works with the online and the internal is like recovery plan. But the question is what happens if there is no more internet? So they co start to contribute on their local server. But then internet goes back. But the problem that we have a lot of content which arrives uh, from data sources, uh, comments, user reviews, user accounts. So how we resynchronize? So it's a, it's a very old problem. It's solved on Drupal 8. It's, it's common to every Drupal 7 installation. So we, today we are testing the two solutions, one small one with services, UAD and, and the queue. So we uh, accumulate all the changes, all, uh, all the things that have to be synchronized in the queue. And when internet goes back, we send the two services to the other node. Uh, the, another one is using deploy content model, which kind of the same, uh, with a little bit more packaging. Um, I can, at this stage, I cannot say which one is more efficient because we didn't have any internet issues. Um, so we we, tr we have to plan in a recovery test plan, but we are very scared to do that, so we, we try to do it later, later, later. Um, so you will see if one day there is no magazine in France named Korea International One Week, so you'll know why. It was a test. Um, another thing is like um, they needed to to be able to deploy the solution over different magazines. So we have uh, the, the big one, Telerama, but also a lot of other titles. So the idea was to create a distribution so they can reuse it with their internal teams or our teams, uh, reuse it across different titles. So, so, so this kind of classical thing, we have this distribution with, uh, with different um, items inside and you clone your installation profiles, whatever. But there is another thing that they ask it for, is how to, man because the, the problem with distribution is good when you set up a new project, you build a new project, you copy your distribution, you configure it and you have your new project. Good. What happens if the distribution gets updated? How you can mix updates from the distribution, the central core or whatever, call it as you want, and your local sites and your instances. And uh, the more complicated thing, so we created them this, uh, this architecture using Jenkins and, and Docroot. I think the Docroot is on GitHub. It's, it's open source. Uh, so the idea that they should be agnostic from the hosting thing. So all the websites can be on the one single Docroot, on several Docroots, whatever. We are quite agnostic for that. Uh, we have this, uh, our G Git core on the left. You have your Drupal core. You have your um, our distribution models, everything. And then inside each site, we have only model th themes and libraries and tools for deployment. And the idea is that each site might be developed by us, but also by other agencies. For example, small magazine, they, we are a little bit too big for them. So we'll probably work with a freelancer or a small company. But uh, yet the company will still work on, on the, the common core and get updates. They cannot commit on the core. They get updates from the core. But the, each site is independent, so they can override views if they want. They shouldn't, but they can. Uh, they still are isolated. Uh, they still can get logs and uh, FTP and backups from, from the central thing. Even if they are on a multi-site uh, platform hosting with one doc root, they don't see it like that. And we offer them all the set of tools to get their, set up their environments locally, and it's kind of good. And uh, we actually, this is, we don't invent in that for this project. We're using um, this platform, this system for different clients, and, and, and it works quite well. Uh, we have over, I think, the, over 150 websites on, on, on one of them, saint Um So we also have GitLab to manage all the things. So now I, I saw that GitLab released an eight version continuous integration. I, don't, I mean, didn't test that, so maybe it's good, but today it's Jenkins and GitLab. And we also offer some automatic testing then. So this is how we, the, the, the site factory is working inside. So it's quite good. Um, and there, I don't see there are many, many different solutions, but I think all of them are using all, most of the same things. Maybe you can change Jenkins but some, by something else, but anyway. So just to give you um, 
some examples too about um, print web. So actually you can create starting with a web version or a print version. Um, and uh, and then you go through the process. So actually there is print and web are just two nodes that are linked. And there are some differences obviously. So we created actually, this is a web dashboard, classical dashboard, but the filters um, and the background, not the background, are not the same. So we have one dashboard for the web, one dashboard for the paper, and one for everything. So the filters, the way you search for the content is different. And when you go well, actually, it's not really, you don't see the differences between backgrounds. Yeah, but they're like different colors, I'm sorry. Um, um, they also, yeah, the, the, the way of searching for the paper, it's quite different. You search by issues, uh, by printing categories, by, well, it's quite different. But at the end, um, um, you have your workflow. So when you create your, your new article, you can, uh, there is a complete workflow, um, and you can split at any moment. So if you created an article in web, at any moment, you can clone it and start a print branch. This is the idea. So you can clone at uh, the later stages. So the idea is to not, you have to rework. Still, you have different version of your same content. But you wanted to do it as late as possible in the workflow. Why different version? Because, oh, well, it's obvious. Links, videos, um, assets are not the same. Uh, and even the content, you can put more uh, chars in the web page rather than in print. You don't select the same uh, pictures because, for example, when you send your content for print, you will send it with, I would say, like 50 different HD images. And then the print, the guy who is responsible for the layout, he will select one or several images on the web you can put on in the gallery, whatever. Um, so for the media, we are still using assets model, which is we kind of maintain that. Well, more or less, but at least we, we maintain it for, for, for the client internally. We don't never have time to release a new version, but yet we it's it's kind of a new revamped version of assets where we have licenses management and the assets it's like SCALD. It's uh, there are two models you should use. I think SCALD or assets, whatever, not use media for Drupal 7. But you have all these entities. Uh, you can drag and drop your content inside WYSIWYG and it's still, um, it's not HTML, so it's still a asset code which could be converted, rendered as HTML. Um, you can also drag and drop them in, in, in reference node, in structured content, like anything. And you have uh, videos, photos, whatever. You have also quotes, you have Twitter status, whatever. So it's media assets management and not just photos. Quite important for, for, for magazines. Um, so the workflow, well, I, I don't ask you to, to, to read carefully all the workflow, but just to give you the idea that the workflow is a little bit more complicated for a big publishing uh, platform with using print. We have several stages like draft to be translated. This is something specific to the, um, uh, to the Korean translation because they translate article from outside. But we also have uh, translated, edited, validated, corrected. The page version, this is with the PDF from the print and then published. So, and it's extremely important because we discovered that how important the workflow, it's like political thing, like the validator have to validate, even there is nothing to validate, you have to push the button. So the thing is that um, actually we also discovered that the change management was the really, really big thing you have to think about also. The importance because, and this is something we didn't think, we created the nice solution with, with workflows, with publishing, with importing content, exporting. We also migrated about uh, half a million of nodes from legacy systems. It was a nightmare, like cleaning up HTML, crappy HTML, and putting in structured content. It's just, um, it never works. Uh, you have to replay, and it takes four days to, to, to migrate. And when you, the release date arriving, you have to, f no more four days, so you try to write code directly in SQL. You shouldn't do that. But the most uh, challenging thing was, um, the change management for the journalists, the actually guys who were using. Because before you, there was a bunch of geek guys who was using the web, publishing on the web. And then you have this enormous newsroom with old guys wearing beers, and, and they use only one tool, really. And they will never, ever go out of this. And it was really extremely complicated for us while using web CMS every day, it's easy. You look the the, the the interface, there is not so much fields, and it's and the WYSIWYG is, is like Drupal. No, it's not like Drupal, but it's not like Word. 
So that was we spend we spend a lot of a lot of time to trying to convince to learn and you shouldn't you should never underestimate this part because the the actual users they will report to the boss who actually will say the project is a success or not. Technically, it will publish and you can print, but if the users will complain saying I don't like it, I mean, it's enough. Then the boss will hear, oh, I don't like it, they don't like it, it's bullshit, so you, all you did is just crap. So really be careful with that because, so in terms of numbers, and, and this is, I think, the last thing I have to say, so we have two sites so far. Um, on the first time we have uh, 15,000 nodes and on the second 500,000, so we have about 20 content providers, different, yes, sorry. Well, can, can I ask you a question? Yes. Yes. So you, you ask a question, Word? <laughs> I, I, obviously, I cannot help you, but yes, let me. Um, so I was actually on a project similar to what you're trying to do. Yeah. But it did get derailed because of the journalist. <laughs> um, so we want a journalist. There is no journalist in the, no, in the room? No, okay, you, you can go speak freely. Right, so, so this, was, uh, this was also for a French newspaper. Oh, God. Um, not in France, it was in Mauritius. Ah, yeah. okay. And they, um, they I wanted Huh? And um, the editors, uh, well, first we did sub-editors, reviewing it, going back to the journalist, then moving on to chief editors, and so forth. The problem we had, though, was with the journalist um, not like to using the, um, you know, the Drupal GUI. Huh? So the two issues they had was um, the dictionary uh, for, you know, checking their, um, checking uh, spelling and hmm? And French are not good in French, you know. <laughs> so, so this was a it's a complicated language. So this is a few years ago. I don't know if there's better tools, but there was no online um, spell checker in French. Yes. Um, well, it, it just just to an answer your first question, actually, yes, it's absolutely true. The spell checker is extremely important. Again, that was a discovery for us. Let's spell check it. Okay. Uh, with all these reviews, but yes, it's still important. And we integrated Prolexis. Uh, which is a uh, Prolexis V7 version, and it's quite working quite well, I would say. Yeah, yes, they have French in it. And the thing is that, again, but you have to think about small, small details. Again, they're all fucking all your project. It's like Prolex is working perfectly well. You have the model. You said, okay, no problem. Two days, we integrate the model. So, but the model works field by field. And there is a lot of, and it integrated with CK Editor, which good, but we also have half of the field are, are not CK editor at all. So we still have to control the, the legs. And there is, ah, it doesn't work, we have to integrate. And then we added a button on each field, check the syntax, and they said, it's, it's crap, we don't want to, to push the button each time, but one button checks all the fields. And now you start to see the problem with Drupal, when you have one interface, not added, and you have all your fields, and you have one button there, who actually goes and checking all the Fields which are different, you have uh, CK editor, so it starts to be, and we spend two weeks as usual. So yes, and the second question the, was? The other editing issue is that in Word, um, editors would put comments right Word, yeah, yeah, comments. So, they, so you have a big long article and you had uh, questions about a certain sentence, they can write comments and be right next to it. Yeah. So you actually have also a library. I don't remember JavaScript. We also integrated that. Hey, it's good. Actually, you should have done my slides. Um, because I, I got that in the previous version, this also. So you, you, you remember me. Maybe, yeah. Well, the project's over, so I should talk, talk to you earlier. Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, yes, uh, the, the, the common system, yeah, there is a JavaScript library, which is, I don't know, it, it's jQuery tool, which actually adds your tooltips and, and comments inside your, you just um, underline text. And then you can store it. I think there was no Drupal models for this slide, so we had to develop it probably. But uh, yeah, they, they still can do it. But again, yeah, you, you have to, adding comments, it looks like easy. I add the lib, I store them somewhere in the model, that's okay. But then you have uh, comment answered. Oh, I want to have workflow over comments, uh, comments not answered, I can answer to a comment. Uh, it starts to be complicated. So. So yeah, that's why at the end, uh, uh, at the end we, we ended with, look, so we have uh, 20 content providers, we have free mobile application, we have 100 
150 people to be trained. We trained 150 people. It, it's a long process. You don't train them. You train them by group of five to six person maximum because they ask questions. And, and, and they are re reluctant. They are right there and they sit like, I don't like your tool. <laughs> and at the end, after two hours, three hours, four hours of training, you show this amazing drag and drop. Everything is much easier. So do you like it? No. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and, it's, and, and they note you, you know, because when you have this industrial way of training people, you, they have notes and then you receive after four hours, uh, three, three, two, two out of five, one out of comments, uh, uh, I didn't like the tool, so mm, yeah. Um, and you have to repeat, they forget and you know, everything. And the support also, also well, at the end what is, was really good idea, was to involve the guys from the beginning. So you take the big mouth of journalists and you take them in the room and the, you work with them on the product. They don't understand nothing, but they still work and they are involved. That's, this is important. The second thing is to have on-site support guy during the after lunch because the bing bang, it's, it's, everything works. Like the website is uh, okay, no 500 errors, no 44, everything is okay, the content is migrated, wow. But still, there is a millions of questions arising. Oh, I don't remember how I have to push it. And it's, it's really uh, stressful because there's like 10 minutes they have to answer. It's, it's, being in a newsroom, it's, it's really stressful experience because everything goes so fast. And uh, um, in the e-commerce side, you don't have this uh, energy and you don't have this level of stress because everything goes like, I have to publish it now, then I leave there. And so you have to answer questions. question. So put somebody inside. And good luck to him. So 15,000 man hours so far. The project is not yet finished. So we have these still many evolutions, new, new lots, etc. 18 months. And I counted this morning 1,193 tickets in Red Mine, which is not so big. Uh, probably some bugs are missing there. They don't see them yet. So I think that's all. So if you had some questions, well, welcome. Try to answer them. No, those guys are not authorized asking any questions. <laughs> yeah. Uh, could, you, could you expand on how you would use Jenkins? Yeah, well, um, Jenkins stuff. So the idea is um, maybe somebody will help me. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so the idea is Jenkins is used to run jobs. So we have uh, three things. We have our uh, Git organization. We have a tool named Docman, which actually builds from different repository one single uh, doc root. So this is a tool you can find it. It's just Docman on GitHub. You will find it. Ajax got whatever. Uh, so the Jenkins actually works on several things. Deployment. So he's responsible of automatic deployment of each commit from dev uh, to the hosting, from stage to the hosting. You, inside Jenkins, you can also manually deploy one production tag. So you press, I want to push in production tag, whatever, it pushes there. It also executes all these things like back up the database, uh, run the update PHP for updated models, um, act, revert features, um, running uh, PHP uh, CPD, running uh, uh, automatic tests with Mink. Uh, re and reverting the, the deployment if everything goes wrong, anything goes wrong. So a lot of small things that during for the, the deployment actually. So this is the main way. So the, the, the main thing is like I take all the websites, their current release state, because they are all in different states, and I all put it together and deploy in one doc root. Mm -hmm. for, uh, for, for print. Did, was the layout no, it was the quark, quark, it was in design. Or in, uh, yes. In design. Yeah. Um, so was layout handled in Drupal? No. Or, or well, just content going out to. Content out, yeah. Obviously, obviously one thing you cannot recreate uh, in design with the panels. Well, not yet. Dries working on that. Uh, but uh, yeah, obviously the, the 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 layout of the newspaper is c still created, but it's fixed. I mean, they 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 don't change it every day, so the, all the layout is created. It, they rework it also the layout because it was created as previously all the content was manually copy pasted inside from Word. 
Now it's automatic process, so they have to rework on the layout because the layout and the design, it's like in Photoshop. If you don't create in the right manner, you cannot automatically because title, it was title one, title two, title three. So we have to rework the entire layout without changing the actual look and feel, but the, the, the layers, the name of the um, boxes and stuff, so we can automatically connect with the XML. Yeah, it's it just another pain in the ass. So yeah, actually, uh, adding there are there are translation in Courier with, because there are, two, there are always two versions: the original version of the newspaper from El Monde, and then the translated French version. But it's a not a Drupal level multilingual system. If you add it, because you have workflow, you have uh, web print, and you have versioning, which is kind of enough of complexity. If you, on top of that, you add translation, which can multiply the number of nodes, it will be just much more complicated. But, well, it's nodes, so you can do it. I think you can do it. We didn't try yet, but you can try. <laughs> yes? Yes, absolutely. Yes, exactly. So, yes, there is a, there is a two stages. Uh, everybody, the 150 people working actually on Drupal now only, and uh, um, they select the, what we call, um, I know how the breadcrumb, for, I, I know the word in French, uh, for, yeah, chemin de fer, I don't know, which, which select the pages, which pages, which content goes to which page. Yes, I don't know, but something like that, when you have to say which page. Yeah, thank you. And, uh, and they also select uh, suggest images, like when they create articles, they go for, for the HD library and say, I want this, 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 they select the images. And then there's another guy who actually the pick up the right image, <coughs> and, and then it's transferred to the server with InDesign, and there the guy take it and have just to select the picture and maybe modify something, generate the PDF, it goes back to Drupal. And then uh, the, the final validator, the editor-in-chief, validates the final printed version in PDF inside Drupal. And once it's validated, it's, it's vali it goes to printing. So in Drupal, everything is Drupal, yes. Everything is Drupal, yes. Yes, everything is Drupal. So yeah, that's why I say that ma change management, in, it's, it's an old house and there is a lot of guys and it's an old organization, so you have to really spend time on change management. This is something very new for us because usually guys are happy to have Drupal. Here they had a tool which is quite cool compared to what they had previously because it was really, really crappy. But they are get used to it f since 15 years. So, you know, you're still using QWERTY uh, keyboards, which is not the more most ergonomic, but you just use it because previously there was printing, ma tapping machine, you know. So it was QWERTY, so that's the same. No more questions? Uh, uh, Yes. Yes. No, yeah, because we, we, we don't have uh, nodes well. Sorry, yes, it's a, it's a mis, mis, misunderstanding. We have uh, actually there are much more entities. But in terms of nodes, what I call nodes is articles and, and the dossier and things inside Coyant only. If we count all the images and all the entities, there are much more. I don't know how much the entity. I think we have like 50,000 images only because they have a large library, because they have own or photographs who created a, their own library from since, I don't know, since 40 years. So, yeah, they have much more entities, articles, there are 15,000 articles, and in Telerama there are, there are uh, half a million, but again, it, I don't have stats, it's quite complicated because we add versions, so the database is big. So the, the Courier, uh, which is launched uh, since February, the second site is, uh, is a private internal beta because it's a much bigger website, so we have also uh, performance issues, but not issues, but we have to be sure that because uh, it's a very well-known uh, website in France to check the TV program. So at, um, at 6 p.m., from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., we have these three hours, the, 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 the traffic skyrocks. 
and it's uh, all um, it's not static so we cannot just put it behind varnish and we because it's personalized you can connect and based on your preferences you load your favorite well, usual thing but yeah so the second site is not yet launched we plan to launch it very soon I hope uh, and the first one since, since February Yes, all the archives are imported. So the, the entire website, you can you can go up to, I, I, I don't think I would, 20 years of archive, I think, I don't know. But all the archives are here. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 not print. No, 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 no. Yeah, I, don't, I understand. No, uh, the, the archive is, uh, is for uh, XML content. Obviously, everything before uh, the digital world are only present in, they don't, uh, they don't uh, digitalize the old archive. So, we got this problem on another project, which is a, a B2B project. They, we hired a company that actually digitalized all the OCR system, just digitalized all, all the content. But here, no, we don't have archive with images. But it, it would be not so complicated just having PDF, but they don't have that. Yes. Uh, yes, understanding the editorial was from... Hey. Oh, sorry. 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 Hey. I cannot hear any of the questions. I, I, I will repeat. Yeah, yeah. I will repeat the questions. No problem, sir. No. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, to understand the um, editorial uh, workflow for print. Uh, yes. Um, is um, for the editor? I understand the editor can select the the articles, but can they select the for each page uh, the article or just the the order of the content to they have they have the both. So the first they have the, 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 the validation. Once it's validated, they can select. Um, they select first the the theme based on the theme of the article. Well, let's say politics or Spain. They talk about Spain, so it goes in Spain. And inside the Spain, they can select the page. And they cannot select where the articles goes because this is an offline decision between the editor in chief and the the guys who is putting the, the layout. So they can change it at any time. They can, I think it's an offline process. I don't think that they can select the emplacement because uh, it changed a lot based on the decision between editor-in-chief, the, the guys who do the layout, and the guys who select the photos. So I think this is the, the position on the page. They cannot select it in Drupal. But it would be quite interesting to try to replicate the layout of the paper inside Drupal with panels, and it would be the next stage, I think. No, but it's not possible yet. The page where it goes, but then there is a guy who who re can rearrange it. Yes. Which modules did you use for the media management? Assets, assets. It's it's an old module existing since Drupal five, but we revamped it totally, so we we maintain it now uh, mm -hmm. for Drupal seven. Um, it's it's like uh, ScalD, but it's using medias as entities. So sorry. Yes, so the, the question was, what was the model we used for the media? And the answer is assets. Um, and, uh, yeah, welcome. And, and, and it's kind of, the idea is like using entities and not going from, because the problem with media is the, it's using files, and the, you create a file and then you add metadata, but it's, just, it's wrong because medias are not usually files. You have videos, you have quotes, you have whatever thing. So we created this model, which is named assets, and you can add whatever you wish, and you drag and drop with whatever, which might be file or not at all. You can add the questionnaire inside your WYSIWYG, whatever. So this is, and you have an alternative model because we are very honest. They have another one, which is kind of the same uh, features, but a little bit less it, good. I would say it's Caldi. We prefer assets, but it's normal. We created that. We think it's better. Um, but, it, well, yeah. 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 It's two questions. Um, one is about the format. Like, do you use a subset of HTML to format like bold and, and things like yeah. that? Or that's... Yes, like yes. Uh, and and do you consider good. something else like Markdown or, or no, a, another kind of... No, it's still, using, it's still using HTML, but we restricted, obviously, the CK editor to the minimum. Th so they can use, and then at the import level, uh, we have to convert uh, to to a different uh, to a different way on, on in design, but we still use HTML standard HTML tags, but with classes which were restricted and worked out to be sure that the 
the layout is good. But yeah. HTML is okay. Yeah, and uh, also about the InDesign export. Yes. Like, is, uh, is that something that can get into Contrib or something like that? Or because I think it's quite an interesting Yeah, feature? well, the, the feature is... Actually, the feature itself, it's extremely easy. The only, it's, it's very custom to, to each newspaper because you actually, what you do, it's a mapping between an XML you receive and your layout. So it's extremely dependent of the layout. The, the, the code itself that just do them, take the XML and insert, there is, I think, uh, uh, examples on InDesign app. So you can just grab any of the, of the plugin example, Hello World example of importing something. <coughs> so the, the, the real work is to map it. And add business rules like, if I already have uh, an article more with 50 signs, please put it there. And if the article is noted as sticky or important, then put it there. But actually, it's just mapping. We are done? No more questions? No? Good. Thank you.